there's something I don't quite understand when bartenders or home mixologists are making drinks. Some of them don't really understand that jiggers are your friend. Welcome to the Cocktail Spirit from Small Screen Network. I'm your host, Robert Hess. Now there's, there's a big debate about, out there amongst bartenders. Are you a free pourer or are you a jiggerer? There are people who can free pour accurately most of the time. Maybe almost, but not quite all of the time. I say, why leave it up to chance? If you want to have great, consistent cocktails, you need to know how to measure. Now, there are some drinks out there that you can get by without measuring very much. I mean, I think the Martini in Manhattan are probably examples of drinks that you could probably free pour reasonably well. But there are other drinks out there that really need to have that degree of accuracy you get out of measuring. You, you can imagine. I mean, you're using a glass that's fairly small. It's not like you're making a big bucket of soup. You're making a very small drink. And if you're off by a quarter of an ounce, which isn't much, you can really mess up the flavor of the drink, especially when you're using high flavor ingredients, whether it's, you know, absinthe, chartreuse, Campari, Chinar, whatever. You want to make sure you're really making the drink right. Why not take the time to measure? Now for the home mixologists, one of the things I recommend is the OXO measure because it has graduated lines on the inside. You have one thing you can use for almost all drinks you need to make because you can measure all the different pieces together. Uh, another example of something similar to that is this measurer, which is kind of almost a jigger style measure, but you've also got the graduated lines on the inside. It also has this nice little magnetic thing, so it holds together like a jigger kind of, and you can see the outside. This is, this is kind of fun to use. Um, Another example is this one here made out of silicone that's also got the measures on the side. For professional bartenders, these don't work as well because now it takes a little bit longer to carefully pour to the size properly. For professional bartenders, and I even recommend home bartenders get familiar with, is the jiggers like this where you basically fill completely to the top and you don't have to take quite so much time to fill it up to the top, dump it in the drink and do your measures properly. The importance is making sure you get measures that work properly for you. Jiggers quite often that you see like this in kitchen stores, pay attention, may not have measures on them. You'll just find a jigger like this with no indication of what they are. That's like a big end and a small end. Is that two ounces, ounce and a half, ounce and a half, three quarters of an ounce? What is it? What I recommend are the set of jiggers where you have two ounces, one ounce, three quarter of an ounce, one half ounce. Um, it's this three quarter an ounce, half ounce, which is very hard to find. Uh, Cocktail Kingdom has their set of jiggers, which are exactly that. They're two ounce, one ounce, three quarter, and one half. And so these are a great set of measures. You can measure almost, you know, a quarter ounce is gonna be kind of hard but almost anything you want using these jiggers. They really work well. And when those don't come into play, well, that's when measuring spoons are handy. Get a set of measuring spoons if you really want to get exact, and then you get down into it. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to focus on a drink, the Floridita, which I learned early on is a drink if you don't measure it accurately, especially when you get down into the measuring spoons, it doesn't taste very good. So this is a drink that tastes fabulous if done right, and horrible if done wrong. Let's take a look at the Floridita. You start out with one and a half ounces of rum. Then a half ounce of lime juice. A half ounce of sweet vermouth. And here's the tricky part, an eighth of an ounce of the next two ingredients. So an eighth of an ounce is three quarters of a teaspoon. So I'm gonna use a quarter teaspoon and a half teaspoon to do that with. And since it's so important, I'm not gonna be measuring over top of the tin, but on the side. So in case I spill, 
quite frankly, the ingredient that is really tricky here is this white cream de cacao. Because if you get too much in, it tastes like chocolate, where the drink needs to taste just like a, ah, nice drink. And, oh, there's a little bit of chocolate added to it. And that's where the importance of measuring comes in. And the grenadine, we're just gonna add a bit of color as well as a bit of sweetness, an eighth of an ounce of that as well. Now we're gonna add our ice. Strain it into our glass. Now, with a drink like this, like I mentioned, it was the it was the white cream de cacao that is the most important ingredient to measure. Getting off by even a quarter of a teaspoon is gonna mess the drink up completely. If you wanted a free pour simply to show your customers that, hey, I'm gonna give you a little more, more bang for your buck, which again is also a problem, you could free pour, as long as you're good at free pouring, the rum because this is probably the ingredient that makes the least impact from a flavor standpoint into the drink other than adding that nice rum flavor. So being off by a quarter of an ounce one direction or another isn't gonna matter as much with the rum, but any of the other ingredients being off by a quarter of an ounce is gonna matter a lot. So there we have the Floridita, a drink that I think shows the importance of measuring accurately.